Welcome everybody to tonight's home clinic. A home clinic is where we grab one quality coach and he presents on one specific subject for you guys to enjoy and he usually does that from home. If you guys have been enjoying this series and would like to see it continue, uh, we wanna ask that you would like and subscribe below. Those things certainly help us to grow and is kind of that feedback to say this is, yeah, this is a good thing, keep this coming. If you have a desire to present in the future, reach out to us on Twitter, DM us, that's at Chief at the Chief Pigskin. All right, without further ado, tonight's home clinic. Hey everybody, and welcome to another Chief Pigskin home clinic. I'm Dylan Mack, the head coach of Elmwood Park High School and your uh, Chief Pigskin videographer. Uh, today I'm going to be joined by Sean Leota from Burrell High School. Uh, Sean's been coaching uh, for the last 22 years at a variety of different levels from professional to uh, the smallest schools in Pennsylvania. So he has a uh, variety of different experiences and been able to go to a bunch of different uh, places and give uh, been successful at all of them. So Sean, thank you for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, you know, I appreciate Chief Pigskin having me on as part of this home clinic uh, series. You know, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. As you said, coach, I'm Sean Liotta, head football coach at Burrow High School, uh, Southwestern Pennsylvania. I've uh, been doing this for 22 years, uh, you know, coached at every level of high school football in Pennsylvania. So, so as you say, coach, I have a, a wide variety of, um, you know, experience from small school to big school. Um, you know, been fortunate to coach at the college level for a few years and then uh, coached arena football uh, for nine years as a head coach. So um, variety of experience, you know, I've always been a, a up-tempo uh, spread, no huddle guy since, you know, from way back. Uh, now everybody seems to be doing playing that style, but when we started doing it, there wasn't a ton of people doing it. But um, you know, I think that'll come back around at some point. That's the way football works, doesn't it? Yep. Uh, but uh, you know, it's certainly been a lot of fun, and um, certainly a style that um, you know I certainly enjoy. No, and that uh, I, I was fortunate enough to see you when you were in Chicago, and you showed a couple clips. You were actually in the Canadian Football League for a little bit too, right? Well, we, we were in the arena league, so we had a oh, lot of okay. um, That's right. Canadian style motion that we would That's use. That's what it yeah. was. Yeah, we would do some of that. Yeah, we absolutely would, would use some of the – we have used that in years past with, you know, some of the Canadian style motion and things like that. Um, we're just a little different wrinkle to, to what we do. We try to do things that, um, you know, we don't run a ton of plays, but we're going to give you a lot of exotic formation shifts, motions, um, and we're going to play at a really, really extreme um, tempo. Yeah, and and for the guys on Chief Pigskin, a lot of them are group here. And and as an air raid guy, as someone who who loves throwing the ball, uh, Chief Pigskin is much more wing T. Let's let's tone it down. Let's get two possessions a half. Uh, so I think today's topic that you're talking on, the choice route, uh, really kind of lends into maybe you start seeing guys move over into. I could throw the ball six times a game and that'll be okay. <laughs> the, the beautiful thing about this route coach, honestly, to me, it's the best route in football. I mean, it really is. Um, it can go into any offense, you know, and this is probably, I'm glad you picked this topic for, for this home clinic because it's probably the most popular topic that, that I speak on just because it can be used by any team, really. I mean, there are some critical things that you have to do to implement it. And, and what I, what I, you know, warn coaches about is I start to talk about this. When you first look at it, you're going to say, oh, this is, this is so easy. You know, this is, you're going to look at it and say, man, this is simple. Well, it, it's, it's just because it's simple in theory doesn't mean that it's, that it's easy. Right. So, you know, it, it's, this is an expensive play in terms of, of, of implementing it with your, with your kids and getting it to, to operate efficiency because you got to be on the same page. So in order for that to efficiently work with your kids, you really got to put, put some time in. And I'll talk about how you do that. I'm going to show you, you know, the play. I'm going to take you, you know, A to Z. So it doesn't matter if you're – the beautiful thing about this clinic, it does not matter if you're a, you're a wing T guy, uh, you know, a, 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 pro, a pro set team, a spread to run team, a spread to pass team, an air raid team, a run and shoot team doesn't matter, a, a, a huddle team, a no huddle team, doesn't matter what kind of team you are, you can put this route in. And, and it's very diverse formationally 
And, um, you know, there are a lot of really benefits as to why I like it, um, particularly if you're at a small school level and say you only have one receiver that's really your receiver, you know, this will allow you to almost kind of force the ball to him in certain spots and also move him around to try to get some of the best matchups where you're getting your best kid on maybe their worst cover guy. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's a big part of what we try to do in the passing game. We try to get, you know, our best guys on their worst guys. And, you know, we use multiple adjusting route concepts. So, you know, our, our routes will adjust on the move, which is, which lends itself right into this, uh, this choice concept. We have a lot of run and shoot principles um, to what we do offensively. No, and that was 100% why I wanted to pick this topic. I think it fits everybody. It fits everybody that could come on to Chief Pigskin and they can say, you know, uh, what can we take away from, from Coach here? Well, here we go. This is, this is it. So, uh, well, Coach, let's dive in. Uh, so if you want to share your screen. Absolutely. All right, coaches, looking forward to this home clinic uh, with Chief Pigskin. We're going to dive into these choice routes. Um, it's been a very successful concept for us over the years. I mean, I'm going to, you know, show you a lot of film on, you know, how we are able to implement the, the concept here at Borough High School. Um, you know, it's been a really, really good play for us. Uh, I do want to put my contact information up first, just so you have it. Again, Sean Liotta, the head football coach at Borough High School um, in Lower Borough, Pennsylvania, Southwestern Pennsylvania. Uh, there's my email um, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, there's my Twitter. It's just my name, Sean Liotta. Uh, feel free to follow me on there. I share a lot of content on there with coaches. I like to help coaches. I like to try to, you know, grow the game as much as I can. Um, I did have a book that recently came out titled No Huddle, No Mercy. Um, you can get that at nohuddlenomercy.com. Um, you know, it's been very well received over the last several months since it came out. And if you're a coach that wants to play with tempo, wants to play fast, I believe there's something in that book for everyone. Um, it took me about three years to write it. So, um, you know, I urge you to, you know, check that book out uh, if it's something that interests you with offensive football. Um, we're going to talk about choice routes today. So wh when I'm talking about choice routes, you know, there are two different types of routes that exist in our passing attack. So we have what we call multiple adjustments. The other type of routes that we'll have in our offense are what we call locked routes. So those are routes that are not going to change. You know, they are going to be set routes. And a lot of times in our concepts, you know, every route won't adjust. So we'll have a mixture of, you know, in a play concept, we'll have locked route concepts along with paired with a multiple adjusting route or two, right? Because we don't want to put too much on the quarterback and receiver's plate. So we'll lock routes and then we'll have multiple adjusting routes to go along with those and it's been very successful for us so it's a big portion of our passing attack we don't run a lot of plays all right so guys will say well we run 18 passing plays we, we don't run that many plays but but it'll look like it to our opponent just because of the way that these routes will adjust on the move that if you're carding up plays as a defensive scout team they're going to appear to be much more multiple than they are but it's just our guys adjusting their routes on the move so you know different portions of it that we have we have quick choices we have a seam route that's multiple adjusting that typically comes on the back side of a concept we have what we call deep choices i'm going to talk about the outside deep choice today and we have slot choices all right so we have we have a variety of different things that can appear to be you know hundreds of different route concepts where it's really all just contained um you know within the same play um, the one thing I will say, you know, with, you know, multiple adjusting routes, a lot of people, a misconception that people have is that we just allow our players to just run wherever they want. Like you'll hear, you'll hear people say, well, he's just going to run to grass or, you know, he, he's going to just run to get open. Like we, we don't do that. There, there are, there are very um, strict rules involved with how we adjust, um, where we adjust, the technique of it. Um, and I compare it to this. This is the simplest way I can compare it. It's no different than, and we tell our kids this. So if you're driving, you know, kids forget there used to be, when you used to take a summer vacation, you'd go to AAA and they'd give you a trip tick, they called it. It was a big map and they'd have the route highlighted, you know, that you would take to drive to the beach or wherever it is you're driving. Now it's GPS. So, so everything, you know, is automated and, and people don't really associate this, but 
I look at these multiple adjusting routes as a map, okay? And our ultimate destination is to get to the end zone, all right, as quickly as we can on these routes. So what, what we do is we take these, these maps, these, these different routes, and, and our players will select the best one based off of what's not blocked. So it's no different than if you're driving down the road and there's a, there's a roadblock or there's an accident, your GPS is going to reroute you onto another road that's going, another pathway that's going to get you to your destination as quickly as possible, okay? So, so you have to get on an actual road. So, so what, the reason I bring that up is, well, Tuck, is look, you can't make your own road. So we can't drive through somebody's yard or drive through a field to get to where we're going because that's not on the roadmap because the quarterback and receiver have to be on the same page. So they have to have a good understanding of if this happens, if we have this leverage or we have this technique or we have a squat corner or we have an area outside defender that's buzzing out there, our guy's going to go here because that's the road. And that's the road he's driven over and over and over again, like he knows it like the back of his hand, because in practice, he's continually making these adjustments. So it is a very taught process. It's a learned process. It's not just run to grass. Or if you, if you do that, your quarterback and receiver are never going to be on the same page. It's going to be, a, it's going to be more of a free-flowing uh, you know, type of scenario where you're, you're really throwing things up in the air to chance to hope that your quarterback and receiver are on the same page. We know our quarterback and receiver are going to be on the same page because they know the roadmap. They know the routes they can take, the roads they can take to get to where they need to get to. So I just wanted to mention that because I think that's helpful, you know, when you talk about different uh, option routes or, you know, adjusting routes. So we're going to talk about this outside choice. In the 2019 season, we threw this thing 95 times in 10 games. So we threw it about 10, 10 times a game, right? All right. And, uh, you know, for 1,066 yards and 13 touchdowns. So it was a very productive play concept for us. Um, it was a big part of our offense. And, again, this is just the outside choice deal. We have complementary routes, inside choice, different things that we do off of this um, that certainly, uh, you know, go hand in hand. I think some advantages of the route, it allows us to isolate and attack the worst player in their secondary. So we'll be able with this concept to move our receivers around, um, our best kid around, and try to get him in a bad matchup, as I mentioned earlier. It's good against man or zone. We, we don't care what, what coverage they're in uh, in this. Um, we're going to isolate a defender. I'm going to talk to you about that. Uh, and the defense is always wrong. So your players will believe they're open. If you ask our receivers what route they want to run, I guarantee they're going to say this route or one of our other – slot choices or something like that they, because they believe no matter what the, the defense is going to do they're they're going to be open the best part about this is you can run it from any formation that you have a detached receiver now you have to have a detached receiver you can't be in double tight you know three back t formation to run this because you don't have a detached receiver you need to have a detached receiver right so any set with a detached receiver you know it can be implemented into any offense now here, here's the critical part of it it takes a ton of time and reps. It's an expensive play concept. So don't watch this and say, oh, this is easy. I can go put this in. We're going to rep it five times a day at practice, and we're going to get good at it. Be good. That, that's not how it works. You have to put time into it. I'll talk about how we practice it, you know, you know how we rep it. I'll show you the drills that we do, you know, each and every day with this concept. But, but it will take time, okay? Again, advantages of it. You can isolate and move your best kid around, all right? And, and this is great if you only have one guy. Now, obviously, it's better if you have a few. Like, like I'll give you some examples. So say we're running this route, and we're running it into our bench, all right? Well, we may run it into our bench, and say the, the, the route choice ends up taking this player vertical over the top, and we just barely overthrow it. We're going to bring another receiver off the sideline, He's not going to take that spot. And I may call the same play again because I know I've got a fresh receiver over there that's going to run the same route, and I've now got a DB that's gassed because he just ran 45 yards down the field. And remember, we're playing with extreme tempo. He's got to get lined back up, and we're ready to roll. I got, I got a fresh guy 
who's who's chomping at the bit to go run by him, you know, if he gives him the same leverage. So it, it's a it's a good deal that way. Um, you can really gas the defense, particularly if you are playing fast, and and you can move some of these other guys around, you know, and get them into different positions. Uh, the multiple formation. So so here's the great thing about it. We have multiple protections with this. I'm not going to get a ton into pass protection here because that's a whole another that's an hour plus clinic in and of itself, just even with our six man or five man protection. Um, but we use five man protection. We'll go empty. We'll go six man. We'll go seven man. We even go eight man. So so we'll we'll completely max protect this. And what I tell people, a lot of times people will say, Well, I got a guy, I got a receiver, but he's he's really good. So Every team double covers him or wing combo covers him or bracket covers him. I'll tell you a way to, to make that defense have to have to decide now. Pack the box in. Get in your short yardage or goal line or heavy set and put that single receiver out there. It's now the defense is in a bind. You'll you'll find that you'll get some one-on-one -on -one matchups with your kid out there because they're so worried about you having the box packed in and running the football out of a short yardage set. So I tell guys, there's a lot of times you can get a one-on-one -on -one shot, you know, with your guy out there if you load the box with more players, you know, in a run-heavy formation, put that guy out there. you got a better chance to get these one-on-ones, and we'll, we'll do some of that. Um, you know, what happens when we go empty, we don't see, like, man-to-man -man coverage and people trying to heat us up and blitz and things like that. We see more drop eight stuff. We see three-man rushes. You know, they're playing guys off in the secondary loose. Uh, you know, we see a lot more than that. Um, the other great thing about this play, it's a very easy read for your quarterback. The ball is coming out now. So, so and that's part of that, them and the, him and the receiver just being completely on the same page and being in sync and, and understanding and having an expectation of where each of them is going to be. You know, the, receiver, the quarterback has an expectation for where the receiver is going to break, and the receiver has an understanding that the quarterback's going to get the ball out on time. So that, that's all through high reps, 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 okay? That is, that is critical. Now, drops for the quarterback. We have two different, two different styles of drops, all right? We will drop our quarterback straight back, like you see right here, okay? We're going to take one big, two little. The other drop we have is our angle drop. And that's tied in with the different type of protection that we use. And you'll see here the launch point for the quarterback, all right, is going to set up the inside leg of the tackle, all right? So we just will slightly angle, you know, the quarterback there. It's not a sprint out, all right? We're just moving the launch point. And that's, that's tied into our protection. That's a, an old run and shoot type deal, um, you know, that we certainly use as a, as a part of our attack, all right? So, you know, the keys to this, again, before I start, start showing you diagrams and start talking about when to run it, why to run it, how to practice it, I'll show you a ton of game film. Um, you know, it's reps, reps, reps. If you're not going to rep this, the amount of time that I'm showing you, it might not be a good play for you. You might be better off just, just calling whatever routes, you know, you have going. Um, but running this play will allow you to remove things that you're going to run in your offense. So it actually will allow your, your offensive um, pass menu to get a little smaller. The spacing is important, okay? We're going to talk about spacing when I show you these diagrams and also knowing your quarterback, all right? It's critical to know your quarterback, meaning this outside choice, if your quarterback doesn't have a big-time arm, you know, our kid at Burrow, does a, he has a big-time arm. He can, he can throw it out to the field. Um, you know, on his outside choice route. If your kid can't do that, throw it into the boundary. It's a great boundary route. Key coaching points. You know, anytime we talk to our players, the first thing we stress is alignment and assignment and stance. Those things take no effort to do. So we're always going to focus on that. So we're going to take, you know, a wide alignment. I'll show you that, you know, when we show that when I pull the diagrams up. He's going to key pre-snap the safety near him. And all we worry about is there a safety on the hash or outside the hash. So we consider that within three yards of the hash. So we're more concerned on this play, is he outside the hash? If he's inside the hash, we're not as, we're not as concerned, again, because of our split. All right? The release of our receiver. We do not want to stem. We do not want to do it. We want the fastest release with speed to 10 yards, all right, as fast as possible. 
This decision is made at 10 yards, okay? Um, not off of steps. It, it is made at 10 yards, okay? So at the 10-yard mark is where this decision is going to be made by this receiver who's actually running the choice, all right? So, again, fastest release. That means if it's a press corner, he has to release inside, fine. He's got to get to 10 as fast as he can, all right? It's not a pre-snap read. So guys will, guys will watch this and they'll say, well, we do the same thing. We run either a, a hitch or we'll convert it to a fade if it's a press corner. We're not concerned if that corner is press pre-snap. He could be press pre-snap. We see a lot of bail quarters. So they'll come up and press and they'll bail out of there into quarters late. So our decision is made post-snap at 10 yards. It is not anything pre we don't care what the picture looks like pre-snap, except we want to know if there's a safety outside that hash, on or outside that hash pre-snap, which we consider three yards. His rule for the receiver running the choice, if he can touch the corner, he's going to run by him. So literally at 10 yards, if he's either already climbed him or he can touch him, we're going to get even, we're going to run by him, okay? If we can't touch the corner, we're going to immediately stop the route and we're going to come back down the stem to the quarterback and that stem will adjust. Now, I'll talk about that. I'll show you some film examples of that. All right. The other key point that we stress with our receiver, with our receivers here at Brooke, is we're not blessed with, you know, we have great hardworking kids that are good receivers. They're not division one receivers. They're not, they're not running four, four forties. Chances are, the DB that's covering them might be faster than them. So what we teach them is if they beat him vertical and they climb him, we stack the DB, all right? So as soon as we do beat him, we work to get, to get stacked with him. And you'll see it on film. That way, if that DB recovers from getting beat as the ball's in the air, he's got to go through our receiver to be able to make a play on the ball, which makes puts us in a much more – advantageous position than our guy just running by him and then he can recover with inside leverage typically and make a play on the football all right so we want to stack that guy and force him to have to come through our receiver to have to make a play and you'll see that on the film we we coach that up pretty good um our quarterback again it's going to be three in the gun you know one big two little um depending if it's an angle drop or straight drop you know the routes we're gonna have what we call a choice route we're going to have what we call an octave. So, again, you can do what you want. Now, we do what we call hangout routes, all right? Now, those hangout routes, our guys just take one or two steps off the ball and just basically stand there. Um, some guys don't like that. You don't have to do that. If you want to take your guys on the backside and run a concept back there, we'll sometimes run a quick game back there. Um, you know, we'll do different things. The reason we use the hangout, is we are a extreme up-tempo team where a lot of our players are playing on both sides of the football, all right? So what those hangouts allow our guys to do is allows them to get a breather on a play where, again, as I talked about, the ball is going to be forced essentially to the front side, either the choice or the occupy, primarily the choice, because we don't tell the occupy this, but he's just occupying guys. Now, he has, he has gotten the ball. He's the second read in the progression. I'll talk about it. But, you know, 99% of the time, that's how good this play is. That ball's going to the choice, all right? So the ball is going to come out to the kid that you want the ball to come to. Now, if we don't have an advantageous look to run choice, we will check out of it, okay? We will check out of the choice and we'll get into a different play. But if we leave the choice on and we're running the choice, all right, we feel pretty good about it. So, you know, rarely will this ball get down to the Occupy. So these hangout guys on the backside are doing essentially um, just that. So let's take a real good look here at a diagram just to give you an idea. Now, what we do playbook-wise, we don't uh, give our guys playbooks. Um, we give them these mechanical graph sheets. Um, you know, I learned this from my man, John Jenkins. Um, you know, th these are every, every square on this graph is one yard. So this, this graph is drawn up to be identically to the, to the width, the dimensions, the hash, the numbers of the football field. So 
if the ball's in the middle of the field or on the opposite hash, the guy running the choice, which is right here, he's going to line up a yard or two off the numbers. If the ball is into the boundary and this guy was running the choice, this would be his split. You'll see it on the film. He's only going to be about four yards, three or four yards off the sideline. OK, because we want a maximum split. We talked about we're worried about identifying, you know, who's who's our guy on the hash. Is he off the hash? Is he inside the hash? Because he's really the only other guy other than the corner um, that, that we worry about initially pre-snap, as we call this play. Now, so the, the rules, just to kind of talk about the rules of this real quick. So the guy we're choosing is this corner. So again, we talked about it. So he's going speed to 10 yards. Now, if he can touch him, he's going to run by him and stack him. All right. Now, if this guy's off and we've got leverage at 10, he's going to bring it right back down the stem. Now, in a perfect world, the ball's going to come out right there. All right. But this stem can adjust outside. We can bend it some, some a little more inside. And, and you'll see some of that on the film. So this can't adjust. In a perfect realm, it's coming right back down the stem. Now, the deal with the, with the Occupy route, here's the rules. If we have a safety on the hash, all right, we're going to snap it off on the bender, all right? So we're going to snap it off on the bender at 10 yards. We're going we're gonna to, quote, unquote, occupy this guy, all right? And if we have space in here, we can sit there and wrap and just kind of be, be an outlet uh, you know, for the quarterback if he doesn't like his initial read in the progression. If we have one high safety in the middle of the field, and this goes against everything you teach in the passing game, but that's why this is called an occupy route. We are going to take this receiver and actually post him right at this free safety to, to further occupy this guy. So, so we're actually going to run at him, all right? if he's in the middle of the field. So that's kind of the deal, um, you know, in terms of the routes and, and the spacing, you know, of the routes. And back here, you can do whatever you want. I mean, we've done different things. I mean, I'm at a smaller school. We're extreme up tempo. It gives these guys a playoff because, look, we may we may walk off and just, just hang out. But then guess what? The next play, we may be running him on a choice. Or we may be running him on a choice. And these guys may be getting to catch a breather. So, so it really has worked out for us. It's been good. I mean, some guys just can't wrap their head around telling guys to hang out, um, but it's a smart strategy if you're employing our style of extreme up-tempo with a lot of kids playing on both sides of the ball and playing both ways. All right, is, is the rule there. And, again, we've got the, we've got the Occupy uh, with the backside receiver. If we get into trips, all right, so, so we go trips and we want to throw it, you know, to the single side into the boundary. It's the same rules. This is a really good thing to call against one high safety. So if you're playing a one high structure team, particularly the one high structure teams that want to cheat this free safety maybe to the field or over top of your trips and really expose this guy one-on-one -on -one backside, that's, that's the time to do it, all right? That absolutely is the time to um, work. But you can see that backside split all right, into the boundary. We're only three or four yards off the sideline. All right? It's a really, really extreme split because if this guy is going to make a play over the top, we want him to have to try to come a long, long way um, to try to do it. We'll do it out of empty. You can do it out of either side. This is, again, into the boundary. So it's a, it's a, it's a two-man surface side, you know, the three-man surface. And, and this is a lot of times we'll get into – so what we'll do here, you know, we have hangout routes shown here, but we'll get into, you know, we may run some of our, uh, our block screen concepts where we'll actually, you know, run down the field and, and block and throw a slant. We may tag that or we may tag a quick game to the front side and, and it would be an immediate read. So our quarterback would never, he'd either be taking this if it was there or he's, he's, he's working the progression of the choice route. So we would never progress from like a quick game attachment and then try to get over to the choice. We would never do that. It's either pre-snap, we even a look to this. So, you know, we prefer the hangouts, but we will tag stuff uh, to the backside. Again, two back, 
There's a good example, our do stuff. We max protect, again, into the boundary. Same type of deal, all right? Outside receivers run the deal. We'll stack them up, and you can switch these. So in this particular situation, the point man, the guy that's on the ball, he's running the occupy, and the slot now is actually on the choice. It's the same rule, 10-yard decision, same deal. Nothing's changed. We've just changed the presentation, all right? We've changed the presentation for the defense. The concept remains the same. There is one area of this play that you have to be concerned with, all right? What we call the area outside defender, okay? The area outside defender is the defender that is closest to the line of scrimmage from the sideline. So if it's a rolled corner and a cover two, he would be the area outside defender. If the corner's off, and the next guy inside is that outside linebacker, nickel, star, whatever you want to call that guy. That's who we ID as the area outside defender. So the receivers are eyeballing the safety. Our quarterback at the snap is eyeballing this area outside defender initially. All right. It's going to tell him a couple of different things. Is he either spot dropping or walling? We're immediately now to the read, all right? We're, we're, we're working to the read anyway, but we're, we're not even concerned. The only thing that concerns us on this play, and teams will do this to us, they'll try to bait you. As you get good at this, this is something to, something to understand. you got to have answers for this. They will drop this guy off. He'll play real loose to get you to try to run the stop route because they think they have you figured out. And he will take an old school spot drop like teams would do in seven-on-sevens in a, in a three-deep zone defense, all right? This guy will buzz the heck out of there. I mean, he's running out of there, and he's running to a spot eight to ten yards deep to try to get underneath this stop route and try to steal it, all right? So you do have to be aware of that, and that's where the stem of this will adjust, and you'll see that on film. And that's where we'll come and now attack this guy with our slot choice concept. So the slot choice really goes hand in hand with this outside choice, all right? So if they, here's a couple of just ideas as you, as you start to look at this concept. If they start to overplay the outside choice, so they're, so they're starting to bring that safety outside the hash, over the top to almost kind of try to double team that, that outside choice, then you're gonna run your slot. Throw, it, throw the deal to the single side if they overplay you, um, you know, to that trick side, okay? Now, the only other coverage that you have to be concerned with, and this is kind of a more advanced coverage. You'll see it a little bit on film. To the strength, typically, will squat, all right? They'll wall this off underneath, and they'll really cheat these safeties over, where this isn't a, this isn't a great drawing, but what ends up happening it turns into almost a three deep zone uh, type of scenario. He's going to get there. He's going to spin to the middle of the field, and then he's got this backside. Um, and they'll typically have a linebacker here that'll that'll try to shoot underneath, you know, and another linebacker here. So that that's kind of a, a little more advanced. A lot of high school teams won't see that. We saw it a little bit, um, you know, because we do throw the ball. If you're if you're a team that this goes back to if you're a team that's not really advanced in throwing the ball and you put this in, you're going to get really favorable opportunities to throw the ball, to throw this route, because you're going to have defenses that aren't going to be geared towards trying to stop the passing game. They're worried about you running the ball down the throat with your, with your option, your wing tee, your power game, whatever it is. And so if we start to see that kind of stuff, we get into our slot choice concepts, which we have a million. That's a whole nother uh, video in and of itself, but we have, we have a variety of things we can do to where we'll put the slot on the choice, and it's a similar concept, but at the same time, it's it's a little bit different. Um, but that's that's kind of our answer to it. We can do it out of trips, and you know, so we have the ability to do a choice a lot of different receivers. Um, probably the biggest thing with this route that you could take away from this is drilling the route. So how you how you drill it how you get these reps that are so critical for it. So the way we start doing it, it's cold in Pennsylvania. So when we're in the off season, you know, obviously we are limited a little bit with what we can do with it this year because of the, the, the COVID-19. 
um, but we would be in the gym with no ball. So, like, if we start back up with, with, with the, when we start the COVID practices and they tell us we can't use a ball for whatever reason, we'll be running this route without a ball. So we'll be running our choice routes without a ball. We don't need a ball to read off of, you know, defensive reactions and defensive leverages. So we start by drilling this in a gym. We just pair up. We give different leverages, and we, we execute, you know, off of the depth. During the season, on the field, this is a daily drill that we do, all right? So we do 10 to 15 minutes a day on this play alone. We use shoots or O-lines and indies. We have an individual period. We're big on individuals, all right? Everybody thinks you're an up-tempo team. You're spending a lot of time in team reps. We don't do that. We spend a lot of time in group work, like this choice drill I'm going to talk to you about. We spend a lot of time in individuals. I'm a high school football coach. Our job is to develop football players. We have to develop their fundamentals. We have to develop their techniques. And we do that through a lot of a lot of individual, a lot of reps. So, again, we're an individual. So here you can see our linemen. They would have been in 35 minutes of individual, um, you know, just right there. Um, but then we go to this period four. So you see it's 15 minutes. Choice routes. We pair up, all right, outside choices and slot choices. While that's going on, our O-line's working on – now, this is a camp schedule. So, what, what's interesting here is because this was a camp install, we were actually teaching our inside zone play with our running backs and our offensive line. We don't have the running backs down here for this drill. The running backs go down with the offensive line. If it's a regular season practice, we go live pass pro for 15 minutes with all our different pass protections with the O-line running backs against a variety of different fronts. We don't just run the fronts that we think our opponent's going to run. We see exotic blitzes. We see double A gaps. We see double edge pressure. We see block stuff. You know, we see stunts, twists. We, we let, you know, the scout team guy turns it in like he's Dick LeBeau. He's bringing all kind of different pressure because we want to get work at that against all of our pass protections at drills. All right. So this is before practice has even started. Now, when you, when you ask why are they called net drills, I'm going to pause this for a minute. All right, now we're getting turf at our, at our school this season. We're going to have a beautiful turf field. So when we do this and we practice on our game field, we'll use the soccer nets, all right, is what this will be instead of this, this softball net. But if you don't practice at your game field, like we don't, our practice facility is at the top of our school. There's actually a cemetery in behind here. It's kind of a cool little setup, but we don't have soccer nets. So, you know, this is a, a softball rebound net that we went out and got, and that's what we use, you know, to throw our net drills. And what will happen is you don't have your quarterback throw these because it will be too many balls he's thrown into practice. He'll throw his arm out. You know, our wide receiver coach or everybody's got a young quarterback coach or something that thinks he could still play, this is his time to shine. You put him in there, let him spin it, you know, during these net drills. And all it is is he's only standing about 10 yards away. You get your receivers in a group, and they're going to – do a variety of different things. And as they come across, they're going to get bad balls behind them, up high, down low. We're forcing them to be hands catchers, okay? We're forcing them to have to extend, watch the football in, all right? Really focus on all of that. And, and we get a ton of reps at this, and it's every single day because those are, those are not easy type catches, all right, and they're all going to be bad catch. You know, they're all going to be balls away from their body. Now, if you ask why the net, the reason for the net is we have a bunch of balls, and if we miss a, miss a catch, it just hits the net, and then we go gather them up. We want to avoid the one hand. We want to try to get two hands on every single one of these balls. All right, so as much as possible, we want to avoid, you know, trying to catch it with one hand. But we'll go both sides. You know, we'll carry Oka. Sometimes we'll do <laughs> distracted catches where we have guys waving their arms in front and they have to try to, you know, catch the ball through some arms with, with some distraction. Um, but it's something we do. We want to avoid that one hand. The one, the one hand stuff, um, you know, we, we really want to avoid. Now, here is the uh, two-on-two or one-on-one -on -one practice drill. We also do this with the two-on-two. All right, but it's the one-on-one. -on -one. Now, this was filmed. Interestingly enough, I was the offensive coordinator of the, the U.S. national team, the under-18 team. We beat Canada down in uh, Dallas Cowboys Stadium this January. 
I was fortunate enough to be the offensive coordinator of the game. We put this play in. You know, I put my offense in with those guys, and this was certainly a part of it. So the reason I'm showing you this is this is just during one week of practice. We had five practices to put this play in. I think we threw for two touchdowns on this play alone in that game. And what we do is we pair up, all right? Now, what you're going to see here is these quarterbacks, the ball is going to be late coming out because, again, they're, they're just doing this really for the first time. You know, they have very limited reps at doing this, but they really got better and better as the week progressed. And we went along and they started to get the feel for it. But by the time it was game time, they, they were hitting it a pretty good clip. Now, a couple coaching points with the drill, you just pair up. So it doesn't matter. And this guy, you don't tell him what technique. He can do whatever he wants. He could be up here. He could start here and then bail out. Um, he could be inside. He could be outside. He could be man technique. You know, he could be a hard corner. He can do whatever he wants. You let him do what he wants. We're going to play it live until the receiver hits his break point. So this is not a one-on-one -on -one drill. We are not contesting the catch. We're not defending the route down the field, okay? He's just giving him a read, all right? So his hips, his leverage, he's going to give this guy a read, all right, and the quarterback a read. We are not contesting it. I don't want guys going up for the ball, battling for it, twisting an ankle. I don't want him driving on the ball, trying to break it up. We have other drills for that that we do. I talked about our indie period, right? We do not want guys getting hurt during this drill. That is not the, that is not the idea of this. It's exactly what you see. Now, with this here, this ball should be out. Like, the quarterback's late. Like, like we know right there, if, when you see our game film, you'll see this ball will already be on its way out. And we want body shots for any route where we're breaking back to the quarterback. We want the ball on his body. We don't want him to have to reach up to go get it. You know, we, we want this thing on his body. And basically, we'll pair up. Again, he can touch him. He's going to go by him. That ball should have already been out. But you'll see right there how we're not contesting it, right? We're getting to this point. We're giving a read. And that's it. Now, he'll go run the route. All right, another guy will jump out on defense. That's how that works, all right? And we go and get a ton of reps at it. We get really, really good. We throw it to both sides of the field. That ball would already be out. Like that ball's about a half second late. Like that ball should already be on the way, all right? And when you see our game film, again, you'll see that. Um, but, again, with this, um, you know, U.S. national team thing, it was a little different. You know, just a little different, but I thought it was cool to kind of, you know, film some of these just to, just to show a little. But you can see how they're. I'll bring that one back because that one kind of shows you uh, how they how they rotate in and out. All right, now you're going to get another. He's going to go on defense. You're going to get a guy up on offense. All right, so that's that's exactly how the drill goes. Now we're going. We're ready to go. All right, so that's that's exactly at the tempo. Um, that we're that we're operating this this choice drill, and I will do it with the slots as well. And that doesn't really pertain on those vendors and you know these routes over the middle of the field. Um, but that is our choice drill. Uh, like I said, we do it for for 10 to 15 minutes every single day. All right, let's take a look at some of the outside choice cutups uh, from this last season. You're going to see a lot of the things that you know I talked about on film you know, in terms of how this route has, has been for us. Now here, I talked about the importance of if you have one high safety, throw the choice, the outside choice, away from the one high safety. So you're going to see the single receiver here, all right? You're going to see the single receiver. He's going to get the 10. He's going to sit it down. The ball's already on its way out, all right? I want you to see that. I mean, I want you to watch the release of the quarterback, just the timing that the ball – surface all right now you're going to watch our quarterback's going to eyeball the area outside defender all right which is the guy standing at the five on the 50 all right he's going to lift and with the fact that that corner is off you're going to see that that quarterback the ball is going to come out of his hand all right before he even gets to that break point okay so i want you to see this here
All right. And that, but that's part of, you know, look at the split of our receiver. You know, look where he is in relation to sideline. Like, like we're expanding the field. We're making them defend the entire field. They were even in a drop eight situation. There, all right. And we were still able to get that thing open. Now, here's another example of we're going to be able to touch him and run by him. All right. So again, the, the, the free safety is, a, is to the trip side. He's cheating over the top. We're going to throw it to the single side, all right? But I want, to, want you to watch. Once he beats him, he climbs him and he stacks him, all right? You can watch him stack that DB. That way, if that player recovers, he's got to go through him again to make a play on that. And again, he could touch him, so he ran by him. You know, he got the 10 yards, you know, the 10-yard portion. He was able to touch the defender, you know, right here at 10 yards. So he could literally reach out and touch him while he's going to run by him. He's not going to stop. All right. The key to this is no matter what, you, you be very decisive, you know, in your decision. So, again, here's another example. We get to 10. Again, this ball's already started out. The area outside defender lifts. All right. This player lifts. All right. We're going to the trip side now. Again, we're running the Occupy. We're running this cross across the field like I talked about. You can see all this space that's created. But, but again, the split is important, all right? If our guy had a split on the bottom of the numbers here, he's going to be too close to this area outside defender. He's going to be able to make a play. But because we're literally like three yards from the sideline, there, there's just simply no way that this guy can get here. So, so we really want to stretch you. You know, the wide splits are really, really important, um, you know, with what we do. I, I really can't stress that part of it enough. Uh, you know, here's another example. Again, what I talked about, that area outside defender lifting, right? You can see him lift, try to wall off with the, with the inside receiver, all right, running the Occupy. And that ends up being just a really nice, easy throw, uh, you know, for our quarterback there. And, again, another – Another big first down. Um, here's another example, single side. All right, now, I'm glad we got to this. So let me, let me wind this one back. All right, let me wind this one back and let me pause it. All right, here. I talked about the, that area outside defender, about them playing high over the top, all right, with the corner and the area outside defender spot dropping, all right, really, really spot dropping out of there uh, to try to get underneath of this. So what will end up happening, our receiver, what he's taught is he gets to the break point, and again, he's on the bottom of the numbers because, look, the ball's in the middle of the field. So you see his split changes. So as he gets here to the break point, as this guy's buzzing out here, he sees it, so he'll adjust his stem back down to the sideline, all right? You'll actually, the cool thing is you'll actually see this, how him and the quarterback are really on the same, on the same page here, all right? So that guy's buzzing. Now, he gets his head around and sees it, all right? You can see that little adjustment there. That's those, that is the reason you run all these reps, you run this choice drill, you know, the two-on-one, the one-on-one, it's, it's the rep, this kind of stuff. Because if not, this could be a pick six. We could throw that thing right to that linebacker because he's sitting right there. But because we adjust the stem, we're able to pick it up and get a good play out of it. Um, you know, we'll see if we see it again here. No, now they're blitzing. Now, here's a really good example of stacking the DB. All right. So again, watch the routes. All right. All the routes we talked about. All right. Balls in the middle of the field or opposite hash. We're going to be a yard or two off the bottom of the numbers. All right. We're, we're right outside the hash. We're going to occupy this guy. He's on the hash. So you're going to see this receiver drive up and snap it off inside. You're going to see a hangout route over here. You're going to see maximum protection. All right. And again, by getting in this two back set, as I talked about, We've not forced them to load the box.
allow that defender to to be able to to recover with his better recovery speed. He had to come through our receiver because he's a little slower than him, and and he couldn't do it because he's been walled off. He's been stacked. All right. The only thing you do is interfere with him, and we end up, you know, with a big touchdown play, uh, you know, down the field off of it. So it's it's little details like this that end up playing a a really big role. Here's the stacked, all right? And this is where it's kind of switched because you're going to see the slot receiver now is going to run the run the uh, run the choice. And again, they both lift. They're both off. You know, I would I would say this again. Look at the splits, all right? Look look at the look at how we're forcing we're forcing them to defend the entire width of the field, all right? Again, the quarterback's release. Again, he's not holding the ball. I mean, we got guys coming clean up front that we're not even blocking, we're not picking them up, and it doesn't make any bit of difference because that ball is coming out of our quarterback's hand so quickly because he knows where he's going. He, he right now knows that that ball is going to that spot on the field, all right? And, and I can't stress that kind of stuff enough, um, you know, just because it ends up being, you know, where they're just on the same page. Um, you know, you've given them that roadmap to where they know where they've got to get to, all right, and it just really, you know, here this is this is stealing. You know, there's no undercover here. You know, we know that that ball's coming out. All right, on that stop route, it just ends up being a being a really easy read and really good deal for the quarterback. All right. Again, uh, we get the coverage to lift. All right, we get the coverage to lift here. This is a checked play. We obviously check to it. I'm gonna throw it into the boundary. All right. I'll throw it into the boundary. You're going to see the under coverage lift. Corners off. We're going to stop. And again, it's because of the split that that guy can't get out there. All right. Because you got to remember, we run that slot choice. All right. We run that slot choice. So that guy in the under coverage, this guy right here, if he's told to wall off, he's got to wall off because if he sets this guy free, and just buzzes out there. Well, we're just going to sit right there and throw him the ball. All right. He's actually closer than him. That's even better. So if we're seeing that, you know, that's, like I said, that's the complimentary. That's the if then to it. All right. Here's another good example of our receiver adjusting his stem. He starts to feel that this guy, all we tell our receivers, trust your eyes. You stop, you get your eyes around. If you think that this guy is in your line of vision back to the quarterback, you will start working your stem back down to the outside, all right? And you'll see our, you'll see our guy do it here. Now, again, check his split, all right? He's, he's, again, off the bottom of the numbers because the ball's in the middle of the field or the opposite hash, all right? We don't want to be way down here if the ball's in the opposite hash. That's a, that's a, that's a you know, that's a pro bowl, you know, NFL-type throw. I mean, we, we got high school kids here. So we're, we're right on the bottom of the numbers. It gives us a nice thing. It gives us a lot of room you know, to be able to, to work, you know, this grass and work outside here. But you can see this receiver has captured all these guys here, here. We got the hangout. So I got to say, well, what about the hangout? Whatever route this guy runs on the backside makes no bit of difference to this route we're throwing over here. He's 53 and a third yards away. All right. So again, that's a, you know, that's a good deal. You know, been a, been a good one. Here's one where he's going to bend inside. All right. Again, just how that route that route adjusts. Now instead of adjusting outside, this guy buzzes almost a little bit too fast. All right. So he's going to settle inside and catch the football. Okay. So again, just the stem, the stem on that deal will adjust. Again, he can climb them. Ball is going to come out. All right. We're going to throw the ball on time. We're not going to hold the ball. All right, this ball, these balls are coming out of our quarterback's hands. All right, again, that's a that's a big time that's a big time throw there. But again, a lot of people say about the hangout routes. I mean, you can see that's we're just, we're just occupying these guys. All right, we're working away now. He's he's rested. That's our thousand yard receiver from last year. Now he's ready to roll because again, we're playing with we're playing with some some really uh, you know some really extreme tempo you know, with what we're trying to do. Um, let me see if I have any more on here. Okay, here's one I want to talk about. So we also have this. This is an important adjustment. So 
we'll call this route, all right, and we'll give a tag that will that will tell the receiver that's choice that he does not have the option to to sit it down. And here's the reason why. This is third in like the next county over. All right, this is third and ultra, ultra long. Now, inevitably, what would happen? This guy is going to fall off because he's not going to get beat over the top. Your guy's going to go 10 yards if you have his call, and he's going to stop right there, and you're going to be 20 yards short of the sticks. We will add a tag to the call that will tell this receiver he's got the same deal. The only difference is he cannot sit it down, but what he'll do is as he pushes vertical, it's locked. And as he gets to 15 yards, if he can't run by this guy, so the guy's still over the top, he's going to start looking back shoulder at that point in time, all right? He'll start looking for the back shoulder throw, all right? So we basically lock this vertical, but we will give the option to, so we're not just running into coverage. We will throw the back shoulder. And you ask, when do we rep this? During the choice drill. We'll work back shoulder throws during our choice drill. We'll work back shoulder throws when we're in our inside run period. We'll put our outside receivers working one-on-ones, red zone routes, things like that, and we'll work these back shoulder deals um, during that. Because you'll see this, we end up picking this up, you know, because, you know, we're able to, you know, we're able to get four over three over here. We got a one-on-one, you know, we lock it. And you can see them start looking back, all right? So let me, let me rewind that a little bit. So watch our receiver. He knows he can't run by him. He gets to 15, and the quarterback knows as well. So he's going to give him a shot. He starts peeking. I mean, that's really well executed. All right? We end up picking it up for a big, big first down. All right? Now, what you want to try to avoid, I have this clip on here to show you kind of what to, what to avoid. This has to be a break point at 10, as we talked about. So we don't want a, a, a stutter step or a stem or a stick. We're either gone or we're stopping. Our receiver here, we end up throwing a touchdown, but that little, that little stick he gives here at the top of the route, you can watch our quarterback kind of like double clutch because he was expecting him to stop there, and the throw ends up being a little bit late. We almost throw him out of the back of the end zone. We end up getting it, but we don't want this little, this little hesitation deal uh, here at the top of the route. All right, we don't, we don't want this kind of, um, you know, this kind of action here. You know, we get a little, little stick there. We don't want that um, because that's a, that's a key to our quarterback. You know, that we're going to go ahead and, you know, we're going to go ahead and throw that ball uh, on the stop. Now I talked about the Clio coverage. Here's an example of Clio coverage, all right? So we can see down to the bottom of the screen here, that corner is now squatting and they're rotating over the top. So we just throw it in the hole. He now becomes the corner, all right? So once we clear this and, and we know he's squatting and it's not a man under situation, all right? He now treats this area just like he would, you know, on the choice. So he'll sit right in the hole. And again, look at the spacing, all right? I can't, I cannot, Stress that enough. We have the Occupy route that's holding all these guys in here, and now we're stretching this guy, and we're just in a perfect spot on the field where we are in terms of our landmarks, where our quarterback can put that ball into that hole. You know, it's really just pitch and catch. It's not a big deal. We've seen this, done this a million times. I mean, this quarterback is very confident, you know, in making that throw. Uh, we know where we expect that receiver to be. Again, because we've drilled it, you know, just time and time and time again, where it's really just kind of become, uh, you know, a second nature deal, uh, you know, for our quarterback. So, you know, if there's any other things, you know, any other questions, we're on with the slot stuff now, but, you know, we're not going to really have time to, to dig into that. Um, be glad to answer any questions you have, Coach. So, yeah, as far as the guys making the wrong decision on the choice route, are you just living in, and dying with what he does and you're expecting with the reps that you've done in practice that then you gave them the tools and sure. they're going to go out there and execute, basically? Sure, and we get very few busts on that stuff. 
Um, we really do. Um, there are very few busts. Um, you know, you will have them from time to time. Obviously, kids are kids. Um, you know, but again, everything. So, so if it would be a bust, you know, we would either get into a scramble situation where we have scramble rules off of that, where everything has a secondary scramble route, or we would work the ball, um, you know, to that occupied guy, and he's got little scramble rules. And even the hangout guy has scramble rules. So as he's hanging out. You know, if he sees it, the ball's not thrown right away. Now he gets into a secondary. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. All right. Uh, yeah, because I was like, we had a kid last year that loved the kid, but uh, on shallow, he, instead of dragging across, he was the shallow. He kept running and out. And like my quarterback, every time it comes back to the sideline, he's yeah. like, he, he keeps running and out. And I'm like, yeah. I don't know what to tell you, but. Yeah. We so spend like, a lot of time on the reps. It's a lot, a lot of reps, a lot of reps. Gotcha. Um, as far as, because uh, like I said, I got your, we talked a little bit beforehand. I got your book yesterday. I started flipping through. And Absolutely. you guys put, your, you do this with uh, some of your peewee teams. Sure. Oh, yeah. We work, yeah, we work hand in hand with our local youth league. And, you know, we, we have a really good relationship with them. Um, you know, and because we're trying to build kids from the ground up. So we're trying to, you know, improve football in the community, build it. Uh, lost your audio there, coach. Uh, by a lot of college coaches, high school coaches, youth coaches. Um, I think it's got something for everyone. It's not the thing I'll, I'll caution guys about. Um, people told me this is the best book on, you know, no huddle, tempo, philosophy that they've, they've ever read. And that's, you know, pretty high praise. And that's very humbling to me. Um, but what I'll, what I'll urge guys on is this is not necessarily a playbook. This isn't a book that has plays in it, okay? This is, this is an organizational book. So whether you're a no huddle guy or not, there, there's something in here, you know, in terms of your offensive structure, I think that, that'll help you in terms of how you practice. Um, Cause I really give you everything that I have in terms of how to structure your offense and organize it. Yeah. And that was one of the things when I started flipping through it, um, I wasn't quite sure. I know we, like I said, saw you in Chicago and uh, got you, uh, talking about the playbook a little bit or talking about the book then and I wasn't sure how much of it was play specific and this is really more of a program manual absolutely uh, how to set up your program more than absolutely, absolutely. You know, the plays we run go out there absolutely. and run them because and, I want guys to be able to take this information and utilize it with their program whether they want to be a full-time no huddle team whether they want to be a, a part-time no huddle team whether they want to just understand a little more about how to defend it. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. I study wing T materials and stuff. You brought the wing T up because we have a wing T team on our schedule. I don't run the wing T, but I want to know what makes it tick. I right. want to know how to stop it. I want to know what their constraint plays are. I want to know what gives them issues. So the same way I would buy this book if I was a, a defensive guy, because mm -hmm. I'd want to kind of see into the mindset of, you know, what, what, what is going through a play caller's mind? Cause I, cause I take you through everything. Probably the biggest thing in this book that will benefit coaches is I have an entire chapter dedicated to codification of your offense. So how to take your current offense and codify it, make it one or two word play calls, use numbers, um, communication systems. Um, so whether you're a no huddle guy or not, you could literally codify your entire offense after, after reading the book, which I've gotten really good feedback coaches on that right and all quarterbacks are going to enjoy that whether you're no huddle or not instead of having to run back and forth uh 60 times a game to to the sideline right absolutely the easier you can make it on your kids the better that's that's where i said we try to make it we try to make it simple and let our kids play fast you know that's a that's that's what's critical to us yeah uh i got two more for you um so as far as your splits go for your receivers um, do you change up your splits depending on the pass concept you're running? 
Sure. Yeah, our splits are all adjustable off the pass concept. So you want to be careful with that. So, so I'll, I'll, you know, we used to run mesh play a lot, you know, the old air raid mesh. And what we found was every time we got into running that, we ended up with these kind of compressed splits and it kind of made it a little more easier to, to diagnose that. So right. we try to be pretty standard with our splits now. We've okay. got little ways that we do that, but, you know, we, we try to, we try to be very, um, we want to try to give you the same presentation with our base formations. Now we'll have bunch sets. We'll shift. We'll motion. We'll do things to try to get you because I'm a big believer. If we just line up in a static formation all the time, we're making it easier on you as a defense. So we want to give you varied formations. We want to give you motions. We want to force you to auto check your defense because of how fast we're going. So we want to line up and empty, force you into an empty check. And now we hurry up and shift into our two back. Now we're in our two back. Now you're trying to check something else and we're snapping the football. That's kind of the whole idea of what we do. We don't want you to be comfortable. And I go back and forth and these defensive guys, you know, Lord bless them, but they all want to run all these complicated things. So I, said, I said, man, I'll tell you what, there is no way you can call all that stuff as fast as we're going because right. we're going we're gonna to change the presentation for you. We're not going to line up in a two-by-two two the whole time or a three-by-one. We're going to give you different things that are going to force you to have constraint issues with what we're going to give you, whether it's run fit, whether it's pass game, you know, we're going to force you, but as an offense, here's the, here's the drawback to it. As an offense, you've got to have answers in your toolbox to take advantage of those things. So if you never work uncovered throws with your receivers, if you don't have your routes adjusting, if you don't have your pass protection able to handle double A gap pressure, outside pressure, four to a side, if you don't have all that already built in, you're in trouble because I'm, I'm a big believer. When we practice, here's another thing. So when we practice, we never script out the defense, the defensive look against our offense. Never do it. They can line up however they want. They can blitz however they want. I don't want to know how they're doing it because I want to call plays during on Friday night. I can't tell Coach Smith across the way, like, hey, Coach Smith, time out now. I'm going to run my slip screen to the field. So I'd like you to go ahead and run that four-man blitz that way so I can go ahead and run. That's what, that's what coaches do, and it baffles my mind. I used to do it. I used to do it. So I said to myself, this is the stupidest thing in the world. We're literally wasting all this time. Number one, waste your time as a coach. Right. You're, you're scouting up, scripting out all these practice schedules left hash we're gonna run this play we want them to blitz to the field the four-man side and you're thinking to yourself how do we know that they're gonna do that so i'm a big guy you know you'll hear a guy say at practice they're not gonna do that how do we know they're not gonna do that they might blitz nine guys and leave two of your guys uncovered mm -hmm. completely uncovered if you don't have an answer for it they're gonna do it every single time right you know what i mean they're gonna yeah. do it every single time and, and what I tell guys who are spread guys, no matter what kind of offense you run, if you're a spread, if you're not going to force the defense to cover down on all of your receivers, it makes no sense to spread them out like that. Mm -hmm. You might as well bring them in, get some H-backs or tight ends or something, because if you're, if you're, cause, cause you're not matching them. The whole idea of a spread is to get the box to dis. Still lost your audio. Sorry. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, so we're 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 forcing people to have to stretch sideline to sideline to defend us. That that's critical. That's the whole idea of our offense. Yeah. No. That's what we did. Start. We started that last year, and I think that was the best thing we did. My quarterback got super frustrated because he's like, we would do our screen segment, and our DN would, after about the third time, he'd read the play and then work his uh, screen retrace. And he's like, they're not going to do that in the game. I'm like, well, if he's a real good DND, he will. Absolutely. And I'm like, Absolutely. they need work too. I Absolutely. mean, you know, Absolutely. so you got to – we only have two and a half, three hours at most that we want to be out here. So We like to prepare for worst-case scenarios. The only other suggestion I'll give guys, if you're, if you're a, a spread team, we go blitz every day. We go against heavy blitz every day because we rarely see it. 
we might have got blitzed one time last year, really, where heavy, I consider man coverage, people mm -hmm. bringing pressure and stuff like that, try to heat you up, really. But we want to have an answer for it if you do it. We right. got to have plays for that. We got to be able to pick you up. We got to have rub routes, pick routes, ways to get the ball out quick, you know, different things, screens. We got to have all that ready to go. Yeah, and that was actually one of the things uh, I took from you uh, when you were here in, in Chicago was we did a blitz segment and the kids loved it because, like you said, I don't care what you do, bring 10. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it like, yeah. doesn't matter to me. Scout team go crazy. And we, we yeah. have the real skinny guys that, you know, they, they wanted to say, oh, well, I could be a D tackle. Just put me in sure. it. Mode. Um, but then what you do that's a little different that, I, that I'm putting in this year is then afterwards you send the old line off and say, hey, go clean that up. And yep. I thought that we was sent, we sent our O line and our running backs yeah. down, and they have what they we call a blitz cleanup period. And while we're doing that, we're doing our pass skelly with our with our receivers, quarterbacks, and we use our backup running back. He'll start in the skelly. Our okay. starting running back will be in the blitz cleanup because that's important. He's part of the protection six right. man protection unit. Then about halfway through, we'll rotate him. So we'll bring the starting running back back up and send the backup running back. Down so he can get his blitz work and um, it's great because you fix your problems so and it gives your kids confidence because mm -hmm. you're like you know we got beat by double a gap pressure when we were running this particular protection why did it happen mm -hmm. and we can say you know what we got to make a zero call we got to we got to slide this thing we got to make an r call an l call whatever it is we have to if we see this in the game this is how we're going to fix this and it gives your kids confidence you know, of how to do it. So it's something that over the years has worked really well for us. No, and that, I think that was the biggest key instead of coming back the next day and saying, all right, well, remember yesterday, guys, like, yeah. no, like immediately we're right going to say, now. this is right what we builds, It builds your kids' confidence. Right. That's the whole thing. Because it, it, it doesn't matter what we know as coaches. Right. It's what can our kids do on the field and what can they do when the bullets are flying? Mm -hmm. You know, you could get up on that whiteboard behind you and, and out chalk war everybody <laughs> in the planet. But right. if your right. kid doesn't know that we got to slide this protection against this double A gap pressure, your quarterback's going to get hit all night long. Yep. And the other thing I'll say about the passing game, a lot of people, we spend a lot of time on protection. We probably worry more about protection than we do our pass routes. I'm, I'm just being honest with you because to me – you have to keep your quarterback clean and confident as a high school passer. If you don't, and he's getting hit, and he's worried about getting hit, he's not going to go through all these reads and progressions and all these other things. He's going to be looking at the rush. He's going to look at the line. Once he does that, you're dead. Mm -hmm. If your high school quarterback is looking at the pass rush, you're done. He's got to be looking down the field. He's got to be looking at your keys, at your reads in the secondary, second level, third level. He's got to be able to manipulate those guys with his eyes. If he can't do that, you're going to be in trouble. So the way you make it comfortable for him is you let him know, we're going to have you protected. All right. We're going to have a plan for protection, whether it's five man, six man, seven man, we even use eight man. So, so we have a bunch of different protection schemes to try to try to keep our quarterback clean, a limited number of plays, and, and we give our guys um, adjustable routes to be able to attack the defense. Now, the last thing I want to ask you, um, so like you said, this is an expensive play. Um, with kind of everything that's happening, I know a lot of guys are going to be watching. Is this something that someone could put in if they, let's say, some states, like I'm in Illinois right now, and I don't know that we'll get, uh, get summer ball. Uh, is this something they could put in once they start in August? Absolutely. And, and I'll give you, I'll give you the, the example of I was able to coach that U.S. national team mm -hmm. as the offensive coordinator of the under-18 team this past right. year. Those kids came together for one week. We okay. didn't have those kids other than for five practices. We ran that concept during that game, and we had, I think, two touchdown passes off of it. So, um, you know, it, it is something absolutely that you can you can put in. Everybody's going to be in the same boat as everybody. Right. That's what I tell. So it's not like you're going to play an opponent that's been over there training in Russia with Ivan Drago and Rocky for the past, you know, for everyone's in the same boat. Right. Everyone's in the same boat. So, you know, it, it's, it is what it is. You, you, you're going to have to be a good teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the biggest thing. Coaches are going to have to be great teachers 
during this period of time. It's how are you going to get this message across to your kids and get this stuff installed? So I think there's going to be a benefit to playing fast, mm -hmm. okay? Because I'm going to bet my kids are going to be in better condition than the team we're playing. I can promise you that yeah. because of how we practice. Because of how we practice. If you're a huddle team and you're milling around at practice and you come to our practice and you see the tempo and we practice, I'm going to get my kids in shape faster than you are. So I'm going to bet we're going to be in better shape. We're going to be very small in the number of things we do, mm -hmm. but we're going to get really good at them. Right. So just like anybody else, game one, game two, we might, we might have growing pains just like everybody will. But we start to get grooved in week three, four, five, as we keep getting reps and reps and reps. And obviously, the losing these summer reps, you know, obviously hurts everybody. But, again, everybody's in the same boat. You know? Right. Well, awesome, uh, Coach. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, you have your book out. Uh, they can find it on No Huddle, No Mercy. Uh, and then before June 1st, they could catch you on Coach Tube. Uh, if you want to just talk about that real quick. Sure, absolutely. So I've got a special deal on Coach Tube. Um, I call it the No Huddle, No Mercy Vault. For $99 right now, you will get a copy of the ebook, which the book itself sells for 30. Mm -hmm. You will get four, over 14 hours of video and counting. Um, we've got cut ups, clinics, installs, my quarterback manuals on there. The quarterback manual alone is worth $99. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, you know, uh, it, it certainly is. Um, you're going to get cut up tapes, teach tapes. You will have those for life. If you get it for $99, you'll have it for life on, on coach two, but starting June 1st, I shut that off because I don't want guys to have access to that during the season. That's how good the material is that I put on that, that deal. So June 1st, $99, you're in, you have it for life. I will not open it back up until 2021. So after the season, it'll open back up for 2021. But um, this will be your last chance, June 1st, to actually get in that vault. All right. So, guys, make sure you get in there. Uh, get the book. Get on Coach Tube. Get Coach's vault. Coach, thanks again for uh, coming on the home clinic. Tons of great information. Love the choice route. Uh, thanks for being on the, uh, the home clinic. It's been my pleasure, Coach. I want to thank Chief Pigskin for the opportunity. All right, guys, if you like the content, make sure you hit uh, like below. Uh, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll get all the updated information and when new stuff comes out, our four quarters on Monday and then film Fridays on Friday. And then our home clinics, which are coming Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, with a bunch of great coaches and a ton of great content. Also, if you want to go on to chiefpigskin.com and check out our online clinic, we have over 150 coaches that come and present on multiple different areas, not only the X's and O's, but program development as well. All right. Thanks again for watching another Cheap Pigskin Home Clinic.